Un gran saludo para ustedes también. We're just waiting for uh, His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj. And then we'll uh, start the introductions. Big blessings for him. What do you do? Uh, no, once when, again, whenever you see, as soon as you see him, you can stop sharing. Mm -hmm. You can now also stop sharing. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sri Samahambhava since Lord Shri Prabhupada. Hi. We are so grateful that today, after so many months of tapasya, we get to get blessings of His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj. So, Maharaj, thank you so much for giving blessing to Iskand Baltimore. We'll have a brief introduction because today is a very wonderful uh, day. Maharaj is going to give so much details about Juhu and everything, the successful journey there. And then uh, we'll get to know what Maharaj's book also for that one. So brief introduction. Since 69, it's been almost more than 51 years now. Maharaj has been in his con. So congratulations, Maharaj, 50 years just celebrated last year during COVID time. So it's wonderful. Maharaj has been a very close associate with Prabhupada. <clears throat> he had associated with so many different projects. And looking at his great abilities, uh, Prabhupada had given an assignment of uh, president of Iskon Bombay. And that was uh, the most amazing thing which was done because Maharaj oversees the whole project of development of the Hare Krishna land in Juhu. Um, besides that, um, I've been very fortunate not to even go in Juhu, but also Maharaj has been involved in the Bhakti Vedanta Ashram Govardhan. And we stayed there. It's a very beautiful place. And we all know the beautiful Bhakti Vedanta Hospice where so many Swamis and so many de devotees have passed and going to Golok Vrindavan. Uh, also, Vrindavan Institute of Palliative Care. Maharaj has become renowned for his wonderful austerities and how wonderfully he has uh, raised funds for so many different missions and cultivate that. <clears throat> he's also was a um, he's also on the board of trustees and uh, president board of trustees. Be seeing his abilities, he was there and GBC commission for that one. Prince Maharaj is in uh, California and he's fulfilling what Prabhupada always wished from him to write so many books. And if somebody hasn't uh, read his books. They're just marvels. Uh, we were very fortunate watering the seed about different devotees, many moons, uh, life's final exam. Actually, I was fortunate that I was went to a, one of the hospice and I spoke to one of them and I gave them the book. And the person was so appreciative. So this is such amazing books for that one. 
and now the most recent book, which is a marvel. So we won't take too much time because we want to hear the Nectarian, uh, from the Nectarian lips of Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for coming and blessing us. So um, I will begin by singing the Mangala Charana prayers and leaving a short kirtan. And then I will speak about the Juhu story. Wonderful. Thank you. And is there any particular aspect of the Juhu story on which you would like me to speak? Maharaj, I think the whole story is so nectarian, but whatever you just tell us, we will be so glad. We just want to hear everything, whatever you can share, Maharaj. <laughs> okay.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhu
Anantakoti Vaishna Rinda Kijai Amacharya Srila Hari Das Thakur Kijai Prem Sekaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Kijai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shamakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Kijai Vrindavan Dham Kijai Navadweep Dham Kijai Shamuna Mai Kijai Ganga Mai Kijai Tulsi Devi Kijai all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. All glories to Shiro. So uh, <laughs> I will read about one of the, well, there are many exciting uh, events that took place during the uh, struggle to get the Juhu land and build the Juhu temple. And uh, I will read and speak about one of those. Um, <laughs> so I'll just be back in a, a minute.
So this, uh, this event uh, took place in May of 1973. Um, you know, we were not getting permission to build uh, the temple because there was a big conspiracy against us. But um, Srila Prabhupada said, if necessary, we can simply make Hare Krishna land into a bus stop. We can have many buses for distributing our literature and those buses can go traveling and distributing books and they can come back to Hare Krishna land, the bus stop, and the devotees can spend a few days and become rejuvenated and get more books and then go out again. The permit we had for our small temple was only temporary. It had to be renewed every year. Near the end of the first year, when we approached the municipality for a renewal, we did not get any reply. So we wrote them another letter, again, without response. Finally, when the permit was about to expire, I took all the relevant papers and went straight to the municipal commissioner at City Hall. I explained the situation in less than five minutes, giving the man a concise account without mention of Mr. Nair or our dispute with him. And based on my explanation and the documentation I had brought, the commissioner granted the year's extension. Just as I was coming out of his office, however, I saw one of Mrs. Nair's agents and I could tell that something was up. So I went straight into the commissioner's secretary's office and induced him to type the permission right then on the spot and get the commissioner's signature. I sat there and waited until he returned with the signed document. And then I took it with me and left. But I knew that Mrs. Nair was trying somehow to get the land back. We had heard rumors that the municipality was planning to demolish the temple. In a letter dated April 28th, I wrote to the Santa Cruz Police Department, quote, we are the owners of a Sri Shirada Krishna temple at Hare Krishna land at Juhu village. In a, late, in a letter dated April 27th, 1973, the Municipal Commissioner of Bombay, Sri M. W. Desai, has informed us that the permission for the shed of candle, candle wall steel tube frame, which is the temple, is extended for one year. Two nights ago, excuse me, two days ago, a man allegedly from the municipal corporation threatened that at nine or 10 today morning, the municipality would come and demolish this said temple. Such an act would be totally illegal since the commissioner himself has assured us that the permission is extended. And since the municipality has given us until April 29th, 1973, to show why the temple should not be demolished, which we have done. Should the alleged authorities from the municipality come to demolish the temple, there is likely to be a breach of peace. And we request you to be on hand to prevent any such disturbance. We also alerted the local devotees 
and our friends about the danger. Tamal Krishna and his party were traveling in Madhya Pradesh, and I was keeping him informed by post. He would come every now and then just to see how things were going. And a few weeks later, in midway, he came for a visit, enlivened and full of stories about his preaching. At around 10 in the morning of May 18th, Tamal Krishna left to rejoin his party. And less than two hours after his departure, two large trucks from the Bombay Municipal Corporation drove onto Hare Krishna land. And 50 municipal workers carrying crowbars, chisels, and sledgehammers descended on the temple. Following close behind was a big police truck from which 20 or 30 constables emerged. I rushed forward to meet the municipal officer in charge and ask him what was happening, why they were there. He said that the structure was unauthorized and they had come to demolish it. I replied that the temple was authorized and that I had the papers to prove it that I had just had our permit renewed. We have permission, I said, you can't do this. The officer, however, seemed uninterested. Even after I showed him the permit and the letter I had received at City Hall, signed by the municipal commissioner himself. We don't accept your papers, he said and he ordered the demolition to begin. Actually, it was understood that, uh, the, that the municipality was bribed by Mrs. Nair. Oh, that's coming next, okay. <laughs> I approached the policeman for help, but was told offhandedly, we are just here to see that there is no trouble. Actually, they knew that we would try to stop the demolition and they were to, there to make sure it continued without interference. What we heard later was that Mrs. Nair had collected 25,000 rupees on the death of her husband and had distributed the money to the municipal corporation and the police. The municipal councillor for Juhu, Pushpakant Matre, who had been supporting Mrs. Nair all along, had arranged for the temple to be demolished. Some workers put a ladder up against the temple, but when one of them was about to climb up with a head sledgehammer to break the roof, I knocked the ladder over. Three policemen grabbed me one by each arm and one by the neck and tossed me into the police truck. Other devotees rushed forward to stop the demolition, but one by one, each was apprehended and thrown into the truck. Maybe 20 of us in all. The last one left was Maitali or Maitili the head Pujari. She's a great heroine in this story. She had locked the doors to the deity chamber and was standing set steadfast in front of them, ready to knock down anyone who came near. I was carrying the deity's Rajbog offering, she later recalled when I saw that there were a lot of policemen surrounding the temple, I dropped the plates and started to run towards the temple. I closed, locked and bolted the deity room doors, which were up a few steps. And I stood on the top step with my back to the doors. The workers were knocking down the whole roof of the temple hall including the long tube lights. A 
as well as the framed pictures of Krishna. And when they turned to destroy Tulsi, I left my position with my back to the doors and went to the middle of the temple where Tulsi was standing from the morning because they were going to hit her. And at that point, they grabbed me. I hit one of the officers in the face and they all came around me and started to drag me out of the temple. On the way out, I wrapped my elbow around one of the steel tubes supporting the corner of the temple and held on as hard as I could. She was a big, strong woman and they couldn't pry her off. They started hitting my elbow with a stick so I would let go and I fell onto the floor of the temple. And then they picked me up by one foot and one braid of my hair and dragged me across the field, which was now full of people watching the whole thing. They carried me halfway across the field and as many people watched in horror, they threw me face down into the police wagon. When Prabhupada heard that Maitali had been kicking and screaming as the policemen were dragging her by the hair, he said that she would go back to Godhead kicking and screaming. And he compared her to Draupadi, whose hair infamously had been grabbed by the evil Dushasana. After Maitali had been dragged from the temple, two women, Jagat Purusha's mother-in-law, Yashoda, and another local woman guarded the deities. And because they were Hindu Indian ladies, the police did not touch them. But other than them, no one, not any of the hundreds of neighbors, tenants, or passers-by lifted a finger to help us. When the demolition squad had destroyed or dismantled the entire temple hall, except for the steel poles supporting the roof, they called for a blowtorch. Meanwhile, some of the neighbors who had opposed us had gathered to watch and were laughing and joking together. Matre was standing by the little Shiva temple across the street and he and his accomplices were enjoying the show. One man who lived across the street, Krishna Rao Rane, stood quite close and was laughing as he watched the workers cutting through the steel rods with the blowtorch. Before we arrived on the land, he had distilled illegal liquor there and hid it in the overgrown weeds and bushes he was quite influential in Jew in a Tamasic sort of way and didn't think he would maintain the same power, the same hold on people with us there. Yashoda, a Jagat Purush's um, mother-in-law, was also something of a mystic. And when she saw the man watching and laughing, she cursed him. Just as you are laughing now when Krishna's temple is being burned, one day you will also burn. Only one devotee wasn't arrested during the demolition, Manasvi. He was a Gujarati, uh, his, his, uh, before initiation, his name was Manoj Patel. He was crouched behind some bushes, watching the whole thing. When he saw us all being carried away, he found a telephone. We didn't have our own telephone then. And called our friend and supporter, Mr. Kartikeya Mahadevya, and asked him to help. Mr. Mahadevya phoned Bal Thakre a staunch Hindu and the founder and leader of the Shiv Sena, 
one of Bombay's most political, most powerful political parties and told him what was happening. If he didn't intervene, Mr. Mahadev told him, the temple would be destroyed and he would get a bad name. Bal Thakri phoned the municipal commissioner, informed him of what was taking place and told him to stop the demolition. The municipal commissioner, being part of the clique that had conspired against the temple, objected. But Mal Thakri warned him, just remember who this city belongs to. That was a veiled threat. <laughs> okay, Balasab, okay, the commissioner said. And he called the local ward, which had dispatched the attackers and told them to halt the demolition. The ward officer <clears throat> himself came running reached the site just as the workers were getting ready to dismantle the deity chamber and ordered them to stop. They had already completely destroyed the Darshan Manda, the viewing area, and had removed the first pieces of the roof above the deities. Those of us in the police truck were taken to the Santa Cruz Santa Cruz station and locked up in a holding cell. I want to phone my lawyer, I called out. No phone calls, they said. Stay where you are. You're not going anywhere. When Dr. Singal, another good friend of ours who lived in Villa Parla with his wife, Nirmala Singal, when Dr. Singal heard that we had been arrested, he came to the station and appealed to the officer in charge on our behalf. They are not sinful, he said, or criminals, and they are not hypocrites. They are genuine people. We know them. They should be released. The police allowed Dr. Singal to come inside and see us. Quote, the devotees were doing kirtan his wife recounted, sitting and chanting with cartels in the police lockup. They were not sad, except for the deities of the temple. Otherwise, they were happy there. They had full faith in Krishna. Only after several hours were we released from custody and able to return to the site. When we got back from the police station, we came upon a strange scene. In the middle of a vacant lot strewn with rubble and metal bars that had once supported the temple structure were the beautiful Sri Sri Radha Rasa Bihari, dressed in their green and silver outfits and garlanded with flowers. They stood on their carved teakwood altar amid the fragrant scent of burning incense and warm glow of ghee lamps. Only a few pieces of the roof over them had been removed. Other than that, they and their deity room remained intact. And the picture of Lord Nishingadev over the altar doors, although slightly tilted to the side, had survived as well, as if he was looking down upon us and ensuring us that he had been there to protect the deities. It was amazing, mightily recall, the flower that I had put behind the ear of Radharasa Bihari was still there and the ghee lamps were still burning. The only offering they had missed was the Rajbog offering. <coughs> the next morning, headlines broadcast the news of the temple demolition. Quote, unauthorized temple demolished by municipal authorities, announced the Free Press Journal, of which Mr. Nair had been the editor. 
The makeshift Radha Krishna temple constructed about a year ago by followers of the Hare Krishna sect at Nairwadi, Juhu, was demolished by 30 municipal officers amidst police security. This resulted in a clash between members of the Hare Krishna sect and the municipal officers. Matre had arranged for hostile reports about us to appear everywhere, which, as we learned, could be achieved by bribing the newspaper people. He had been paying people off and spreading his false propaganda, telling them that we were hippies, drug users, kidnappers, even CIA agents. He, he raised questions about our charitable status with the commission, charity commissioner. And even more alarming, he approached the foreigner's registration office to have us kicked out of India. When Srila Prabhupada was informed of what had happened, he was, of course, concerned. But he told us not to worry. The episode was part of Krishna's plan, he said, and if we took it as an opportunity, the results would be positive. The demolition of our temple by the municipality would actually strengthen our position. Still, he told us, the incident showed that we could not manage it all on our own. We needed the help of our life members. We should take advantage of the incident to organize them and get them more involved in our activities. And along with our other supporters and sympathizers, publicly protest the attack, expose the persons responsible and begin the rebuilding process. And he wrote a letter to our friends and supporters. As I was busy with other aspects of our effort, Hari Kesh had volunteered to publish a special demolition issue with a photo of the demolished temple wrapped around the front and back covers and the heading, Religiosity in Shambles. So basically, we undertook a, a very uh, thorough effort to meet all the municipal counselors to convince them uh, of, of our bona fides and that the temple should be allowed to be rebuilt. Um, So we set, a, we, set a, we set to work on getting permission to rebuild the temple. Quote, there was a hole in the roof of the deity room over where the pujari stood to do the RT, mightily recounted. And until we got that part fixed, I had to stand in the rain when offering RT. I remember Giriraj standing in front of Sri Sri Radharasa Bihari with an umbrella for Mangal Arti until the temple was repaired. Quote, under the circumstances, Prabhupada had directed, we should immediately reconstruct the deity shed. Barbed wire fencing should be immediately done to cover the naked land. And if possible, immediately in front of the deity shed, a temporary pondo should be constructed with our materials. If it is so done, then I can go to Bombay and begin Bhagavat Parayana discourse to continue until the court decision is there. This is my desire. Anyway, the, uh, 
the municipal corporation condemned the demolition of the temple and um, public sentiment uh, turned in our favor. The tide began to turn. As Prabhupada had predicted, our position was strengthened and a great wave of sympathy rose in our favor. In addition to the many friends we had cultivated and the almost 700 life members we had enlisted, all of whom had developed a deep respect and affection for Srila Prabhupada. Scores of Bombay residents, including many influential businessmen and politicians, were opposed to the violence and what they saw as an attack on the Hindu faith. The apparent calamity had served at an, as an impetus for us to meet more new people and present Krishna consciousness and to organize and mobilize our friends and supporters far beyond what we could have done under ordinary circumstances. While we had been working with our life members to get permission from the municipal corporation to rebuild the temple, Mrs. Nair and her lawyers were busy trying to prevent us. So we continued to hold meetings with our friends and life members discussing how to proceed. At one of these meetings, one of our friends pointed out that we might not actually need permission. We had already been approved to build the temple and the municipal commissioner had agreed to extend the temple's permit and the municipal Pality didn't have any valid grounds for demolition. So although we hadn't specifically been given permission to rebuild, there was no ruling that we couldn't. Nothing to stop us from just restoring it. Somehow, Mrs. Nair found out what we were planning to do. And the next day, Friday, she went to the high court with a petition for an injunction to prevent us from rebuilding. It was her property, she argued, and she hadn't given us permission. She petitioned that, quote, pending the hearing and final dis disposal of the suit, the defendants, that's us, their servants and agents may be restrained by an order and injunction from this honorable court from constructing or reconstructing any structure on the plaintiff's said property. That's her, you know, her property. And that pending the hearing and final disposal of the suit, the defendants, us, their, their servants and agents, may be restrained by an order and injunction of this honorable court from entering into or remaining upon or otherwise committing trespass on or into the plaintiff's said land. In other words, she's trying to get us kicked off the property. The judge, Justice Nine, had been both Mr. Seti's advocate and a chief guest at our second Cross Maidan Pondo. So he was familiar with our society and activities and appreciative of Prabhupada and our movement. He said he would consider granting the injunction only after he had heard both sides. Because it was Friday, he pointed out the end of the week, he would take up the matter on Monday. When we heard of Mrs. Nair's petition and the judge's response, we knew we had to take advantage of the opportunity. If the judge ruled against us, we would be prohibited from going ahead with the reconstruction. But once the temple was up, we understood an injunction, even if we were granted, would be meaningless. The temple would already be in place and no rebuilding would be necessary. 
We figured we had the weekend until Monday morning to put up the structure. So the next day, Saturday, I met different friends and arranged to get um, construction supplies, which weren't easy to get back then, and, and workers. It so happened that Mr. Seti is one of the heroes of this story. It so happened that Mr. Seti was in Juhu with his family to check on his house under construction and enjoy a weekend beach outing. And before returning home, he thought of visiting the temple. When we came, he recalled, we saw the small shed had been demolished and the description given to us of the demolition was horrifying. Not only was the temple demolished, but they wanted to take away the deities. Mr. Seti was in poor health, but he declared, no matter what laborers are available or not, I will rebuild this temple and will do the labor work myself. As it turned out, he was able to bring plenty of laborers and also supplies from his own construction sites. In the course of the day, Mrs. Nair, Matre, and Mrs. Nair's solicitor, Bachubai Shah, all came to the site. You can't do this, they shouted, demanding that we stop. Matre too demanded that we halt the construction. No, Mr. Seti replied. Why should we stop? You can build it up, Matre threatened, but I will come in the night with 50 gundas, hooligans, and break it down. Mr. Seti turned to his son, who was by his side, and said, Bridge Mohan, bring my revolver and my rifle. Then he said to Mr. Matre, don't bring 50 gundas, bring 100, bring 200. I have 250 cartridges, he used the word cartouche. I have 250 cartridges. You'll have to bring at least 251. He had a kshatri aside and he was staunch. Quote, they did not count on the amazing heroism and bravery of my personal hero, Mr. P. L. Seti, mightily later said, echoing everyone's admiration. As Bridge Mohan Seti remembered, so with the revolver in my hand, and the rifle in daddy's hand, we started the work. We could do this, not because of something in us, but because of the blessings of Prabhupada. Only with his blessings and mercy could we start the construction. The entire night it was raining cats and dogs. I mean, <laughs> raining heavily, very heavily. But we never stopped the work. It went on. As the rain fell, Mr. Seti recalled how by lifting Govardhan Hill, Lord Krishna had protected the inhabitants of Vrindavan from the devastating rainfall sent by Indra. They were joined on guard duty by Jagmohan Sir Sargar, a popular singer, Amritlal Pandya, these are different friends and supporters of ours from the Juvaville Parla area. Vian Bakshi, also a life member, he was associated with the Jansung political party, organized two strong volunteers on motorcycles. They circled the land and patrolled the road in front of the temple. A few police constables came in a van, but they left around midnight. I was overseeing the rebuilding and Tamal Krishna told me, I want you to stay up all night and make sure the work is done. People will be working all night long and Gundas may come to attack. 
I want you to stay up and make sure that the work keeps going and that nothing goes wrong. A few days earlier, Satsvarupa Maharaj, my first temple president, by whom I was greatly inspired, had passed through Bombay. I appreciated his humble and gentle demeanor and I wanted to emulate him. When Tamal Krishna told me to stay up all night and oversee the work, I mentioned how I wanted to be like Satsvarupa Maharaj, a simple, humble sadhu. Tamal Krishna looked me straight in the eyes and with a firm intensity and controlled anger responded, your humility will be to stay up all night and make sure this temple gets rebuilt. I thought about it and I had to agree. Where was the humility if I was not ready to surrender to the order or desire of the spiritual master? If I would have retired for the evening so I could get up early and be a good devotee and chant my rounds, which wasn't bad, I wouldn't really have been humble. It was more humble to submit to the authority and do the needful for Srila Prabhupada's service. To be humble meant to be ready without personal consideration to do whatever the spiritual master wanted, whether or not it conformed to popular conceptions of a humble sadhu. Mr. Seti and his son, the friends and life members and the laborers stayed up all night to protect and complete the construction. I was there with my gun, Mr. Seti recounted. We started at nine. At 11, one man came at the road, but I challenged him. If you come inside, I will shoot you. And he ran away and shouted to some other men. They are ready to fight. Don't go there. It was pouring rain and the lightning was bad. And when the men were putting up the asbestos sheets, they were slipping on the ground. So we brought 50 mats and put 20 men on them, one man supporting another, so that there was no slipping. 10 masons worked all night and we completed the walls in the plaster. Sridhar Swami was at the site too, chanting Japa in the Jeep. When someone asked him why he was there, he joked, if anybody comes, I can make a quick escape. Actually, the whole thing was right in keeping with my nature, he recalled. When there is a good chance to fight for Krishna, I don't run away from it. It was very exciting. I was ready. We stayed up all night, miserable night, but we were waiting for them to come. Mr. Seti had his gun and I had a knife or some other weapon. And the devotees, life members, masons and other skilled workers, laborers and other friends did it. They put it all up that one night, finishing around four in the morning and no one came to disturb the work. And then we had Mangalarti. Matre returned around seven the next morning, but by then it was too late. It is built, we told him, go to the court. Later that morning, we appeared in the high court and told the judge that the temple had already been rebuilt. What is built is built, he said to Mrs. Nair. No one can destroy the temple. When Prabhupada heard the news, he considered it a complete victory. The temple had been rebuilt. Quote, in Bombay, we have just been victorious over the party who had drawn down our temple and the temple has been completely reconstructed in addition to our gaining overwhelming new popular support, he wrote to Guru Das. Then to Mrs. Singhal, he wrote, I am glad to hear a victory in the matter of the Bombay property. Now the temple is rebuilt and people are supporting our cause and finding out more about our great movement. 
you please help and tell everyone how nice chanting Hare Krishna is. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, you know, one uh, 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 of, of many um, episodes in, in the history of Hare Krishna land. And it was, it was exciting. And it involved a lot of bravery and heroism, uh, especially by Mr. Seti and also by, by uh, our, our devotees and, and friends. And, and in the end, we were successful. Um, yeah, I'll just read a little more. It's also interesting. Three weeks later in London, Srila Prabhupada brought up the topic of the demolition with George Harrison. Quote, in Bombay, we are undergoing some tribulation. You have seen this booklet? Prabhupada asked, showing George the special demolition issue that we published. The city municipal authorities knocked down our temple, Shamsundar explained. Why did they do that, George asked. Oh, that's a long story, Prabhupada said. About the land, Shamsundar added, there was some dispute. We purchased it and the other owners had tried to dispute it and they were powerful with the police. They didn't want you to have the land or they said you didn't own the land. They said we really didn't, even though we paid for it, Shamsundar said. They were, they were powerful friends with the police and they got the police to come and they demolished the temple. Really? With the deities in there? They didn't destroy the deities. No, Prabhupada said. They dismantled the deity room. In the meantime, another message came, don't go on further. So they stopped. You'd expect it somewhere like in America or the West, George said. In India, you wouldn't expect that. No, Prabhupada agreed. This is an extraordinary incident. Now the public is on our side. When one preaches, he must tell the truth. Just like Lord Jesus Christ, the people did not like his preaching, but he did not stop. But in preaching, there is possibility of creating animosity. Anyway, so <laughs> thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak about the Jew story and for joining me. And now uh, we can take uh, questions and comments from our uh, participants. So if you want to say something, uh, please raise your hand. Your, your literal hand or your um, virtual hand. Oh, looks like Prabodhananda Prabhu. Yes, please speak. Wait, we can't hear you. Yeah, you have to unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute. I'm trying to, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, when you speak about the deities, are you talking about the big deities or are you talking about the Achavikdaha deities of um, Radharasa Bihari? I'm talking about the big deities. Are they the same deities that are there right now? Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah. I always, I always keep this picture on my, uh, on my desk. Well, I guess. But yes, yes, this is the very same, very same router recipe. Okay. Right? 
Thank you so much, Mara. This was so amazing. Uh, I think just one story. Wish we could just keep going and going, just listening to Nectarian words. I think uh, about the stories. I read some other things in Iskon News also about these wonderful stories. I think we'll definitely encourage everyone to really want the nectar, just like Mara's other books. These books are amazing, the treasure houses. And I think if, uh, the local devotees we have in our temple, uh, Iskon Baltimore has uh, is like 30 or 40 books there. So please take it there before they get vanished from there because a lot of people will be asking for it. So don't miss this opportunity. All right, I have a, one question. Uh, this is such an extraordinary event. I'm just uh, hearing about that, how at the last second, Krishna's intervention happened and they're just about to break the roof and the message came through. So Krishna acts in so wonderful ways. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Bal Sakura, he did a great service. He, he stopped the demolition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Are there any other questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for sharing this story for with us uh, past time. Uh, one question I had, uh, I, I don't know much about this past time previously before. Uh, so is there, any, is there any special significance that Srila Prabhupada was interested in this particular land to, for us to have a temple here? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, as many of you may know, uh, Srila Prabhupada had a great supporter named Sumati Morarji, who uh, was the, um, I guess, I don't know, the um, managing director of a Cindy Esteem Navigation Company. And she actually gave Srila Prabhupada free passage on uh, the Jaladuta. Uh, to, to come from India to America. And she had a, a, a large bungalow on Juhu Beach, uh, quite near uh, Nairwadi, which later became Hare Krishna land. And Srila Prabhupada would pass that land on his way to Sumati Maharaji's bungalow. And he would think to himself, this would be a nice place to build a temple. So then, Prabhupada went to America, he preached, he established ISKCON. And then after five years, he came back to India because he wanted to revive the spiritual culture of India. And um, you know, at first, uh, <laughs> Prabhupada was staying as, as, as a guest, first of Kailash Saksaria um, on Marine Drive, and you know, then as a guest of different friends. And then eventually we, we rented an apartment, which became our first temple in Bombay. In, in the Akash Ganga building, which was on uh, Warden Road, called Vulabai uh, Desai Road, on the seventh floor. Meanwhile, devotees were meeting people and, and enrolling life members. And one of the devotees met Mr. Nair was the uh, editor of the Free Press Journal newspaper, one of three English daily newspapers. And Mr. Nair um, offered Srila Prabhupada that land, that very same land that he saw before he went to America when he would go to visit Sumati Murarji. And so, um, yeah, so Prabhupada went out to see the land and he liked it. And um, 
but you know, <laughs> Mr. Nair was really trying to cheat Prabhupada, but that's, mm -hmm. that's another story. But that's the history of how that land uh, came, came to be our Krishna land. And later, Srila Prabhupada said, you know, he wasn't so keen on that particular land. You know, we, we, we could get land anywhere. But because he had invited Radharasa Bihari there, it would have been a great insult to drive them away. And that he could not tolerate. And therefore, he, he made that effort. And he promised them uh, you know, you just you just stand here, and I will build you a temple, and that's the that's where the title of the book came from. Uh. I'll build you a temple, because that was Sri Prabhupada's promise to the deities: you just stay here, and I will build you a temple. Oh. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pandit. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I was mesmerized by the devotees doing kirtan in the in the lockup. Uh, you know, there. <laughs> um, I'm sure the the police constables and and everybody around would be so charged. I, I would like to hear um, your. Um, I mean, whatever you could remember from that uh, event. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, we were happy. I mean, personally, we were happy. We were chanting and we had faith in Srila Prabhupada and, and Lord Krishna. And um, I mean, at, at one stage during this whole struggle, I went to see the mayor of Bombay in his office, who ended up being a, a great supporter of ours, that, that mayor. And over his office, there, there, it was in Sanskrit or Hindi, um, Satyam Eva Jayate, truth, truth will prevail. So we had that faith, Satyam Eva Jayate, that the truth will prevail. And it did. It did. So we were happy, but we were concerned for the deities, you know, what would happen to the deities while we were in jail. But personally, we were fine in jail. We, we were chanting and we had the company of, of each other, the, of one another, the other devotees. So personally, we were fine. Thank you, Lars. Hi, Krishna. Is there any other questions? Yes, I see. Kartiki. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Pradam. Thank you. Thank you for the nectarine instructions and the experiences which, which you have just shared. And thank you for thank you. Thank you for sharing it with it, uh, it with us. Sorry, I'm I'm just too excited and too uh, sorry, uh, Maharaj, uh, which you mentioned in the lecture, like uh, uh, to be humble means to serve or to follow the order of spiritual master, and that was the best uh, point I I can take within my heart and carry along it throughout my life, Maharaj. You. Thank you for this wonderful comment or instruction and thank you for the wonderful lecture. Thank you. Dhanavad Pranam Maharaj. Are there any other questions or comments? All right. Well, uh, somehow I'm getting an inspiration that we should sing the Nishinga prayers. Oh, that's so fun. 
Thank you. a delay in the transmission of the sound so I, I request the devotees maybe to mute themselves because the um, because of the delay your singing and our singing are not in sync <laughs> well we'll start again no problem Namaste
Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your mercy and requesting all the devotees. Um, we have um, 30 books here, local devotees get it. And other devotees who've been inspired by this wonderful story. This is one of the many, many stories which Maharaj has recollected and put in this wonderful book, of the Temple. So it's the juhustory.com. The juhustory.com is a website where you can uh, order the books from if you are not from Baltimore. If you're Baltimore DC area, we have plenty of books for that one. Please avail of this opportunity. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So appreciate it for you coming and blessing us. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So, we're going to end now. I suggest we conclude with Vaishnav Pranam. Yes, Maharaj. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord who are just like desire trees who can fulfill the desires of everyone mm -hmm. and have compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. Vanchakalpa trubhyascha kripasthantubhye vacha kritanam bhavanebhyo vaishnava namo namo anantakoti vaishnava namo Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you.